So next one is charge coupled devices. So CCD or it is called as a, a charge transfer devices so, and bucket brigade device. So all these are family of names which are used. So charge coupled devices is the topic. And first we will see about what is a charge transfer device. So charge transfer device means it is a semiconductor structure in which charge packets are removed. Removed means they are uh, removed from one place and put in some other place. Okay, it finds wide application in mostly in memories. So in memories, in your inside the memory of your computer, you will have RAM, ROM, shift registers, everything, right? So wherever this memory operation is required, I am going to use this charge transfer device. So remember, you are going to store the binary 0, 1 into the uh, memory. So you cannot store it directly 0, 1. First, you will be injecting that 1. The so 1 will be present in the first cell. If, if I want to inject 0, that 1 has to be moved to the adjacent cell. So the 1 will be moved to the next cell. 0 will be put into the first cell. So this is done by a device called as charge transfer device. So I am going to transfer the charge from one place to another. So two types of charge transfer device are available. One is called as charge coupled device CDD or it is called as bucket brigade device BBD. So we have two types of charge transfer devices which is called as charge coupled device CDD and bucket brigade device BBD. So charge coupled device is a shift reducer formed by string of closely spaced MOS capacitors. So as the, just now I told you the example, right? You have a series of uh, many locations where you have to feed the data. The memory, the data will be moving from one place to another place. So you have to constantly shift the charges from one place to another place. So that is done by a CCD. So CCD is a shift register, which is formed by a string of closely spaced MOS capacitors. So it can store and transfer analog signals, either electrons or holes, which may be introduced electrically or optically. So whenever you are going to have uh, uh, electrons in a particular place, if I want to shift them into the adjacent cell, I can use the CCD to shift the electrons or holes by either uh, electrically giving some signal or optically I can give some signal to transfer the electrons or holes from one memory unit to another memory unit. So the diagram, cross-section diagram of CCD is given here. So you can see this is a CCD. And uh, you have so many gate electrodes. You see aluminum gate electrodes, G1, G2, G3, G4, G5, it goes on. Immediately below the electrodes, you will have an SiO2 insulating layer. Below that, you will have a P-type silicon. OK, so if I am going to apply 10 voltage to the first gate, so you know that uh, equal and opposite charge carriers are produced on the other side of the uh, isolating SiO2 layer. So if I'm going to give plus 10 volt, the opposite side will have a lot of electrons. So 10 volt kundana equal and opposite electrons are generated by applying 10 volts inside this T region. Okay, so that is how these charge coupled devices are going to work. So individual electrodes will have the capacity to give the power supply in the form of DC voltage. So if you give DC voltage, equal and opposite charge carriers are induced below the SiO2 layer in the P-type layer. And aluminum electrodes are used to give the provide the necessary metallization for taking out the wires from each of the gate electrodes. Okay. So it consists of several gate electrodes separated from a P or N type uh, semiconductor by a thin SiO2 layer. So here, for example, they have used P type uh, silicon. You can also use N type silicon, nothing wrong. So either you can use P type or N type depending on the device. There is no hard and fast rule that you have to use on the P type or N type material. So on top of the SiO2 layer, you will have the metallized electrodes which are connected to the signal voltages V1, V2, and V3. Okay, the, uh, a three-phase clock is applied to all the gates uh, to ensure that the charge is transferred serially between the gates and digitally controlled. So everything is controlled by uh, giving DC voltage to your cell. So if you give a positive voltage, it means that the charge is stored. If you give a zero, it means the charge is being transferred. Okay, so first gate connects to a voltage source, say it plus 10 volt to G1, whereas V1 is greater than V2 or V3, so a depletion layer is formed in less than one microsecond. So you see the previous diagram, only I am giving plus 10 volt to the first electrode G1, while G2, G3, G4 and all, I am leaving it 
G2, G3, G4, I am going to leave it without any input voltage. So because of that, what happens? Only where the point where I apply, I apply the voltage V1, only in the point where I am applying a voltage V1 equal 10 volts, I have a depletion layer formed. Whereas in other electrodes, since I am not giving any DC voltage, no depletion layer is formed. Okay, no depletion layer is formed. That is what they are saying. So it, uh, whenever you are going to apply a positive voltage, the depletion layer is formed very, very quickly in less than one microsecond time.